You already know the benefits of journaling. I'm not here to bore you with that. But how do you actually start journaling as a beginner? Well, for the basics, all you need is a journal, obviously, and a pen. Now, you don't need to use anything fancy. You can use anything you have. You can use a notebook. I currently use a journal from 2018. This is so outdated. This one is from 2011. So, yeah, you don't need anything fancy. For your pen, you don't need to have a lot of colored pens. Bruh. You don't need to have a lot of color pen. You don't need to have a lot of color pen. Just a simple pen is enough for you to start. First of all, I would like to clear up some myths that come with journaling. And the first one is your journal doesn't have to be so pretty. It doesn't have to look like what you see on Pinterest or Instagram. Don't put that pressure on yourself as a beginner. Because if you have that pressure on yourself, you're not going to write as much as you need to. You're not going to express yourself fully in your journal because you're trying to feel that aesthetics or you're trying to make your journal look a certain way. So forget about the looks as a beginner. Your journal should be a reflection of you. If you're extra, make your journal extra. If you're a basic person, make your journal basic. The next myth is that you don't need to journal daily. Just pick a routine that works for you and stick to it. That can be once a week, twice a week, or even once a month. As you see the advantage of journaling, you fall in love with the practice on your own and you will decide that, okay, I need to do this more frequently. And as time goes on, you increase the frequency at which you do it. But as a beginner, don't put that pressure on yourself. So now that that's out of the way, let me talk about some types of journaling I personally recommend to you to try as a beginner. The first one is gratitude journaling and this just involves writing things you are grateful for daily or weekly depending on your schedule. It just involves you making a list and writing down things you are grateful for. Oh, I'm grateful for my family, I'm grateful for the air, I'm grateful for my career. Basic things, it doesn't need to be anything serious. As a beginner, this will warm you up to the practice of journaling, especially when you're not comfortable with journaling yet. This just helps you get into it slowly without feeling like you're sharing too much, even though you're not really sharing with anybody but yourself. The next way I recommend you use your journal is to use your journal to write your to-do list, to plan for the next day. A productivity tip is before you go to bed and plan for what you're going to do for the next day. So I recommend you do this together with your gratitude journal I talked about before. After the day, you pick up your journal and write, okay, I'm grateful for this, I'm grateful for this. The next thing to do is to write down your to-do list for the next day. Tomorrow, okay, this tomorrow, these are all what I want to do. And if you do this, this automatically gives you something to write in your journal, in your gratitude journal for the next day. So when you write, okay, today, my to-do list for tomorrow is I want to film this video. Tomorrow, when I film this video, in my gratitude journal, I'll be able to write, I'm grateful I was able to film the video I said I will film. Do you get what I'm saying? And that's even a motivation for you to actually do what you say you will do or what is important for you to do. So I recommend you do those two together because they are a powerful pair. So for the newer generations that don't want to use a pen and a paper, you can use your phone. You can do voice journaling or video journaling. Voice journaling, that just involves you taking your phone, opening up the voice recording app and record your voice. Today is 15 September. This is what happened today. This is what I'm feeling today. So if you don't want to, if you're not the writing type, you can record your voice. Video just involves you setting your camera and record yourself. Today is this, this is what happened. When you look back at that video, it helps you see exactly how you were feeling at that moment. So that's a good way. And that way is to use apps. There are a lot of apps, diary journal apps, so many out there right now that you can use if you prefer to use your phone. So you could do that. But personally, I'll, I'll advise you to use the pen and the paper. I've used two different apps now. Now, getting a new phone, I try to restore all my entries because I backed them up in that app. So it's not like I didn't even back it up. I backed those entries up and now I'm trying to restore it and there's no way it could not go back. It's just giving me error, error. So I've lost so many entries that I've made, so many passwords, so many things that I stored in those apps. That's why I always recommend using the pen and the paper. And it, not only because of that, because it's actually already proven by studies, by journaling with pen and paper, you get more results. You are more reflective. You are able to express yourself more. The advantage of using apps to journal is also that it's easy to search up. Like you might just remember something that happened, and it's easy for you to just go to journal and search search for a particular word or a sentence, and the app will bring up the entry, the particular entry. But when it comes to paper journal, you have to do the clicking. So that's an advantage when it comes to using apps or journaling online. Make sure you just try everything out and decide which one works for you best. The next type of journaling I recommend to beginners is called deep journaling. And this is for people with a little bit more baggage or who have a lot more things to say but are scared. They are scared to express themselves in the journal. Maybe you are scared that people are going to find your journal. So for people who feel this way, 
you can try out deep journaling and this just involves you taking a random piece of paper or you can have a pet particular book that you use for deep journaling it's so traumatic you don't want anybody to say or you're just scared that people are going to find it out express yourself write down exactly how you are feeling write down everything paper is patient paper will listen to you more than people will listen to you so just write down everything without the fear of someone reading it and when you are done what do you do you rip it so deep journaling is just a good way for you to express yourself without the fear of someone finding that so whenever you are done just pick it up and tear it up so you are not scared of someone finding it out or anything like that you've expressed yourself just the process of you writing whatever happened to you down you're already reflecting you're getting new insight it's beneficial for you to just get it out of your system instead of holding back but for people like me that want to always remember things that have happened you know you want to look back later in the future and look back what you experienced i would advise that after 10 you pick your normal journal your regular journal up and you just write a summary of what happened you don't need to give too much details so that later you can reflect back on it and look at it and say oh i went through this at this particular time it just helps to just keep record and that's actually why i started journaling really late i was supposed to journal very early in life my dad keeps a diary my dad has kept a diary since 1980 something everything is in the house now so i grew up watching my dad write always keeping a diary and writing and all that but i never got to do it because i was worried that people would see it in school someone could see it. the old private thing and that's why i just never got into it. and that's why i started with apps that's why i started using apps because i feel like there's a lot more security on apps that's why i use old journals this particular journal was gifted to me in 2017 by my dad and i just started using it last year <laughs> so that's why all i have old journals and i'm using old journals so you don't need to have anything fancy just make it you so now how you should actually start your journal the first thing you need to write in your journal obviously is the date next thing i write the day what day of the week is it and if you are using a recent journal you won't have this problem but i need to write the day is it monday is it tuesday is it Wednesday? the next thing is the time the time i'm writing that entry where am i that's the next time okay 9 p.m i'm at home i'm in bed the next thing after that is the mood what mood are you in i am happy i am sad why are you in that mood that's the next thing i am happy because this 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 happened no i am sad because this 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 happened so starting your journal that way already gives you something to write about top point about not having a lot to write just that some days all you are going to write is i don't know what to write today is just normal today is just a boring day and that's fine so if you are stuck with having ideas on what to journal about there are a lot of things you can do to take your journal from dry to fab check out this video where i share with you 10 tips on how to make your journal more interesting thank you so much for watching guys and i'll see you in my next video right bye